A warm welcome to your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Wednesday, March 2nd. Government is set to offer a lifeline to small businesses which will give them access to capital and ease of cash flow issues. Speaking during the estimates debate in the House of Assembly today, the Chief Executive Officer of the Barbados Investment Development Corporation, Mark Hills, said in the upcoming financial year, government will set up an export bank which will level the playing field for small to medium-sized businesses. At the medium level, um, we're, which account for 22% of our export ecosystem, the need in that space is cash flow issues. So therefore, we took at the special technical assistance program that primarily just uh, aids with, with capital investments and how can we pivot it into a cash flow export credit agency system. Now we anticipate that that vehicle is the instrument that can drive the growth in that middle um, market space. Um, particularly because, for example, with that export bank, if you have your order from your overseas company, you can come to the bank with your purchase order, you can come to the bank with your um, performer invoice, the bank releases the operating capital that you need to meet your order, then the company pays the bank your, um, for the, when the invoice comes back to the bank, the bank takes out what it lent you and you get the rest. And that way, we believe we can create a lot more millionaires in Barbados. Just about 300 people could find employment if government is successful in setting up a digital gaming sector. Minister of Innovation, Science and Technology Davison Ishmael reported that some big gaming companies have expressed interest in beta testing gaming software in Barbados. I had a meeting uh, just about two weeks ago with an uh, international firm. And, uh, and these are where the strategic partnerships and international relationships comes in because with that firm, they're looking to set up a center here in Barbados that will allow for them to test games that are coming to the market. And uh, in the first instance, that facility when opened will employ 200 young people in Barbados. And these are things that I am driving hard because when it comes to employment, especially when it comes to, to our young people being employed and employed in sectors that are growing, multi-billion dollar industries like gaming, uh, and as Director Cyrus said, that are capturing audiences in the millions, uh, we need to ensure that Barbados has a stake in that game and, uh, and we are going to build out sectors like gaming and others, innovative sectors that are going to lead the way to ensure that our young people have opportunities far and wide. By the end of June, Barbadians can expect full Wi-Fi connectivity in Bridgetown as government moves full steam ahead with its citywide free broadband program. Responding to questions from MP for the city, Corey Lane, Director of Digital Solutions and Cybersecurity, Ovan Herewood, said the ministry is awaiting permission from some private businesses to set up IT infrastructure. I would have indicated that we are approximately 25% completed on that project. Originally, we expected to complete the project by the end of May this year. However, we have been encountering a few small setbacks. That 25% completed was where we were able to put the access points on government buildings. However, we are now moving towards putting them on the buildings of the private sector. And there is quite a bit of negotiation that we have to do there. We are, I think that we will get there, but we may be approximately 30, 30 days or so out. Right now it's going quite good. The new digital ID will be rolled out in the coming months with a communications campaign. That's the assurance from Project Manager for the National Digital Registry, Elsa Webster. She provided an update on the rollout in response to concerns raised by former Elder Affairs Minister Cynthia Ford. Ford expressed fear that older Barbadians are being left behind. That our stakeholder groups would have included people from the age of 17 right through to 70, 75, 80. 
the types of communications that we will have and that we will roll out immediately following the launch. And what do I call the launch? We refer to it as the big reveal when the Prime Minister announces and holds up the card and um, we all get excited about what it looks like. And the first, the first set of communications that will be rolled out immediately following that would be videos um, on the what, what are we doing, why are we doing it, um, why do we need a new ID card. The first, the first set of communications will um, be composed of videos along that line, along with Instagram carousels, um, social media, brochures, um, as soon as the launch occurs as well, brochures will be, made, will be mailed to every household. Those brochures are pretty comprehensive and they outline exactly what the citizen needs to do, what the, the, the potential card holder, because it's not just citizens, what the potential card holder needs to do to start preparing, what documents do they need. So if you're a citizen, is it your birth certificate, your passport, and we, may, we have a comprehensive list of all of those documents. They will be provided in the brochure which will be um, mailed out by the Electoral and Boundaries Commission to every single household in Barbados. Along with that we will have, as I mentioned before, videos with voiceovers by the popular influencers in Barbados and again those influencers have been selected by the various stakeholders with whom we consulted. In addition to that um, we will that, that program, the what and the why, what, what do you have to bring, that will be communicated for about three weeks after the launch. And during that time, the brochure should have arrived at everybody's house. Give up sin this Lentil season. Roman Catholic Bishop of Bridgetown, Bishop Neil Scanterbury, today made the appeal to believers attending the Ash Wednesday service at the St. Patrick's Roman Catholic Cathedral on Bay Street. He told the congregation that Lent is a serious time for reflection and to get closer to God. We can take a look at ourselves and truly look to give up sin and the attachments of sin. At the end of the day, at the end of the Lenten season, have we grown in holiness? Or are we going to go back to eating all the chocolate that we put away in the fridge? Or are we going to continue with the sins that we have indeed said so far, so no more, any of those? Are we going to go back to uh, as scripture sometimes will talk about it, a dog returning to his vomit. Returning to our sinful ways. Let is a time that we love to make a serious break with sin, that we battle with it as we pray in the opening prayer, that the evils that indeed that comes, that we will fight them with that self-discipline that we could be practicing this Lenten season. That we really and truly decide that we will work harder on ourselves. We ain't going to be worried about looking at Tom, Dick, and Harry, Mary, Jane, and Sue. We are going to take a look at ourselves. We need to look at ourselves and see in ourselves the areas that we need to say no more. To see the areas in our life that we have to grow in holiness. The areas in our lives that we have to Repent of our sinful ways. Now to the latest COVID-19 update. Barbados recorded 158 new cases of the virus, 63 males and 95 females from the 937 tests conducted by the Besto Santos Public Health Laboratory on Tuesday. The positive cases consisted of 41 persons under the age of 18 and 117 who were 18 years and older. There were 56 people in isolation facilities, while 1,550 were in home isolation. As of March 1, the virus had claimed 316 lives. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I am a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe and 
keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional happenings, Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzales has told Russian leader Vladimir Putin that as a long-standing friend of the Russian Federation, he's deeply disturbed at the special military operation into Ukraine. Gonzales read on the state-owned NBC radio the contents of a private letter he had sent to President Putin. We get the details from SVG TV. I have no problem in saying that St. Vincent and the Grenadines is a friend of the Russian Federation. I have no problem in saying that we are a friend of every country in the world. We, our tagline for, for our Security Council run r was friends of all, friends of all. And that's why we are able to speak frankly to a number of leaders in other, uh, in other countries about our position and we explain what we do. There's a resolution this morning at 10 o'clock on the floor of the General Assembly. And I don't want to preempt our ambassador, but she will make a statement and when we vote, and you'll see how we vote. That is the f on the international front, Google said on Tuesday that it had blocked mobile apps connected to news agencies RT and Sputnik from its Play Store, in line with an earlier move to remove the Russian state publishers from its news-related features. We get the details from Reuters TV. It comes after the company confirmed that it had removed Russian state-funded publishers, including RT, from its news-related features, including the Google News search tool. The European Union also banned RT and Sputnik with immediate effect for systematic disinformation over Russia's invasion of Ukraine on Wednesday. The sanction means EU operators will be prohibited from broadcasting, facilitating or otherwise contributing to the dissemination of any RT and Sputnik content. Apple also said Tuesday that RT News and Sputnik News were no longer available for download from its app store outside Russia. RT Deputy Editor-in-Chief Annabelle Keener said in a statement on Tuesday, quote, This collective establishment seems to be terrified of the mere presence of any outside voice for the fear of losing their historically captive audience. That's news, but for the very latest, you can visit us at www barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.